so this video today is going to be about elimination reactions. So there's two main types of elimination reactions. There's the E1 and the E2. So basically the difference between the two is E1 is under acidic neutral conditions and E2 is with a strong bulky base. So for an elimination reaction there's a prerequisite for the compound and you need to have a beta hydrogen. So the beta hydrogen is removed in the reaction. So first of all, I'll go through the E1 mechanism. So the E1 mechanism, if I draw out a, a compound here, it's got a very good leaving group there. We've got a beta hydrogen, and these R groups can be the same or different, it doesn't matter. So we've got our our alpha carbon with our leaving group, we've got a beta carbon with our beta hydrogen. So with E1, so with the one mechanisms uh, for substitution as well, nucleophilic substitution, you have the carbocation intermediate being formed. So if we were to draw this one out, we would have the leaving group up and leave. So it has to be a very, very good leaving group for this to happen. And then we'll get our carbocation. keep my dashes the right way around for you guys. So you've got your carbocation intermediate that's produced and then you have your, your base come along and deprotonate and form the double bond, so your elimination product. Okay, so you can see the base has come along, deprotonated that alpha beta carbon hydrogen, so it's our beta hydrogen, and then we have the electrons from that hydrogen bond going in to form the double bond. So we've got our elimination product there. And the things that you need to remember about the E1 reaction is the E1 reaction happens with tertiary um, starting reagents. So we have to have a tertiary group um, preferentially. Secondary works fine too, but it doesn't occur with the primary ones as well. We need to have a beta hydrogen available for the base to remove for it to make the double bond. It's usually uh, occurs at the same time as the SN1 reaction, so you'll have some SN1 product and some E1 product being formed. But the E1, from what I can tell, is favoured if it's a very harsh condition, so you've got um, heat added to the reaction and you've got protic solvents. So heat and protic solvents um, favour E1. Now if we were to compare this to E2, okay, so again we'll have a similar starting compound, so we're just talking um, generic here. Okay, so we've got our compound there. Now we've got a strong bulky base strong bulky base. So we've got things like sodium ethoxide, uh, we've got methyl ethoxide, we've got LDA, and we've got terbutoxide. So they're like our strong bulky base. So the first thing that happens with this one is we have the deprotonation from the strong bulky base. So I'll just put B again, so it deprotonates and then we have the leaving group leaving at the same time as that hydrogen bond is being removed. So we have that transition state where we have the partial bonds. Okay, so remember the dotted line of those bonds breaking and forming, and then we will get our product out. So E2, Strong bulky base, so strong bulky bases are your, your alkoxides, so methoxide, ethoxide, terbutoxide, and LDH, and <laughs> a protic solvent with this one, okay? So that's the two types. Now, when you've got the beta hydrogen being removed, if you have a molecule that has a few beta hydrogens, we'll have to think a bit more about which beta hydrogen will be removed.